most Americans know about the Pilgrim Fathers and especially what happened after they bumped up on Plymouth Rock, but very few seem to know of their origins. This rather small looking church, but is a very important church, happens to be the home of William Brewster of the Pilgrim fame. This was his parish. This was his pulpit. He was the parish priest here. And this was the font where William Brewster was himself baptized into this parish. There you can see the plaque commemorating that. There's also a rather special stone here. Just listen. The original, part of the original key. Quayside stones that um, the Mayflower sailed from the key in Plymouth. That pulpit, that is William Brewster's pulpit, and it was from that pulpit that he preached his separatist message. It didn't exactly endear him with the Church of England authorities. And of course, another radical <laughs> American couldn't resist getting into William Brewster's pulpit to do a little bit of hell, fire, and brimstone preaching himself. <laughs> Indeed. You were very straight. You will not fall asleep. Well, you should have a rule like that in your place, Bill. <laughs> we should. I usually fall asleep during the sermon, yeah. Because I call yes. and I say, I say, any time it's about sin, and you stand up and take a bow. Well, that would be a good example, you know. <laughs> well, you see, if you go to any church or building, you see a square-headed window like that. You're talking about the Tudor style, around about 1500, 1600. So this, this church was built when? The original church was around the, 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 the 12th century, 12th, 1150. Hmm. It was much changed in the 13th century. Um, the, most of what you see now is the 13th century. In particular, the, the port you came in is actually a 14th century, a year later, hmm. a century later. It, it's, it's really amazing. I, uh, I live in a house that was built in 1780 by John Crow come over and other Englishmen and uh, come over here and, and, and it's a babe. It's a babe in the woods compared yeah. to... Yeah, it's well, yeah. The, the house. It's called Brewster's house, though he never ever lived there. That some wide, some wide person decided that they'd try and sell it as a, a tourist attraction. Oh, yeah. well, they're but always it, enterprising. It is contemporary with him, but it, you know, it is a 1990, 1590 house. It's, it's not really Brewster's house. It was the, uh, you know, it, it, it was the curate's house. Mm. He lived there. You can always say, you can always say, if you go to any house, always go to the curate because you have that overhang, square and overhang. So if you go to a, a mansion or a great house, that's how you just talk to the curate. If it's an original. This contemporary was built in 1590, this particular house. Right. Now, what you'll notice is it's timber framed at the top part. Now, if you go into different parts of the country, you'll see that the timber framing is black and white. 
Now that's a, a much later modern interpretation. If you want to look at a, gen a genuine Tudor brick, uh, timbering, that's how it should be. The, the wood was never painted and they were never white. They were always a creamy colour. So that's an authentic 1590 house how it always should be it shouldn't be black and white they are modern it's a modern interpretation people have blacked and white them and it, it's and, and it, it looks very attractive but it's modern and it was brick. a lot of houses were yes at, at the time of you know if you remember the Hampton Court and all the big palaces were being built in um, in Bic at that time um, so yeah, it was expensive. Only the rich at the time. Only could people like it. Cardinal Wolseley and uh, the Thomas Cromwell could afford that, oh. <laughs> and the, um, to build. So brick was becoming the build, you know, the go-to building. Yeah. So most of these were they still hung on to some of the old traditions. Of